All right, so the stuff that I'm playing with is called, um, it's by Deco Art, and it's Metallic Luster. And I know Kelly uses like gilding waxes all the time. So I wanted to get some so I could play because I just really love the metallic luster that they kind of leave behind whenever you're using them. But I don't really know how to use them. I haven't looked anything up on anybody's YouTube videos or not just yet. And I'm sure Kelly's probably got a couple few and there's some others. Um, but I'm just going to play. I'm just going to kind of try and figure it out a little bit. Uh, let me see if I have um, the chat turned on here so I can kind of see who's here and who I can talk to. Hey, Kathy, how are you? Have you ever played with these metallic lusters? It's like a, a little wax. This one I... Uh oh, is that supposed to be like that? Was it upside down or something? <laughs> It's like everything is stuck to the lid. Huh. All right. Are they all like that? Or that maybe happen. Oh, okay. So maybe that just happened in shipping. It was upside down a lot or something. Or it got really hot. I don't know, because I'm in Florida, so things can get pretty hot. All right, so these two look normal. And that one looks normal, too. Okay. Hi, Dorothy. How are you? All right. So I have um, some paper, little, um, like, RSVP wedding cards that I had left over from some kind of party. But I did some embossing on them, so I'm going to kind of rub them on that. And then I'm going to um, play with a little bit of distressing and you know, maybe gild some edges. But, yeah, I don't know. I've never played with these. I'm going to get a baby wipe. So they're ready just in case. I I don't know. I don't even know if it's water-soluble. <laughs> and then I have these little slides. So I want to distress these and maybe gild the edges. And then when I put, you know, like a specimen in between them, then they'll be pretty much ready. That way I won't potentially harm, you know, the acetate that I put in between. So if, depending on how long it takes me to play. And then these, see this paper right here? This is from that. I keep my papers. So when I pull the papers up, um, I save them for projects. So I might play with these a little bit. Um, I want to make a floating pocket for the little carpet bagger journal that I'm making, um, like this. This is just a paper bag that was like exactly the right size, but it's not big enough to really, you know, kind of cover it completely. Well, I guess it's just big enough, so I could probably play directly on that paper. All right, so anyway, that's my plan. Yeah, I got purple, green, um, gold, and copper. So the purple I really wanted to use because the primary color in the journal that I'm currently working on is purple. But that's a lot of purple on that lid. I don't know, it's like half the container. I don't know if I should just scrape it off or what. Probably a little popsicle stick. Actually, it's from a Magnum ice cream bar. <laughs> I don't know how much these stain either. Man frame. So I'm just going to probably put most of this back in the container. And then I'll get my fingers dirty. <laughs> I could probably use these with a stencil too, couldn't I? Use it like almost like a molding paste. Hi, Colleen. Colleen, have you ever played with metallic stuff? Like the gilding wax or this one's actually called metallic luster. 
That's what I'm playing with. I've never played with them before. So, hey, any, any you know, kind of like little pointers you can give me along the way, feel free. I almost got myself into trouble last week using my oxides and dipping it directly in water. <laughs> so, anyway, let's move this stuff away a little bit and bring this over. It's really creamy. So this is embossed. It's got little music notes on it. And I don't know how lightly to do this. Maybe I should do it on something else first, just to, so it's not goopy. That's kind of cool. How's it look? That is pretty cool, isn't it? I think, is this the stuff where Kelly rubs it on her, her glass and then she smushes it? Tap some off on a scrap paper. Okay. Or glass mat. I have glass under my paper. I just put a brand new paper on, so. <laughs> I ripped it off last week playing with uh, the oxides. That's kind of cool. I don't know if I'm going to keep going with this color. Maybe I'll find another color. Look at that, how rich it is on my finger. And then it it has, I don't know if it'll pick up on camera or not, but it has like a little metallic luster. Can you guys see it at all? Maybe? Kind of? <laughs> oh, look. It does kind of wipe off. All right, so it is water soluble, at least on your hands. I don't know about the other surfaces, if water reactivates it or not. Let's close this up and play with a different color. Um, let's do the gold, because the purple and the gold are the ones that I kind of want to use. See, this one's a little firmer. That's really pretty. So what's been going on? Are you guys, um, everybody back to work and things opening up? Our bars just opened up today. <laughs> Not that we go to bars anymore, but let's see, open up the green. <clears throat> things are starting. Traffic is almost normal. I don't know where everybody's going because not everything's really truly open yet. Everything says opening soon. <laughs> Hi, Allison. 
I'm just playing with my metallic luster. Kind of figuring out how heavy handed or light handed I can be. And this one's got kind of multiple colors. That green is really pretty, isn't it? Oop, a little thick. And then my fourth color is copper. So Kathy, what have you done with um, these? Have you done, you know, just like gilding edges? I'm working on a carpet bagger or journal, so I want to kind of gild. You know how the old books had the gold gilding on the edges? So I'm going to kind of mimic that a little bit with the gold. This is pretty cool too. I don't know, which color do I like better? Okay. So there's all four of the colors that I have. I also have one that's called, um, I think it's like opal magic or something like that it's by a different company but it's really clear and it just adds like a luster so I'm kind of moving it a little bit to see if we can see the metallic <laughs> cool all right so so you don't need very much that's for sure That's for sure. That purple went really far. I guess I would, well, I was a little heavier handed with it because it was kind of gooped up on the lid. All right. So, what I want to do is make sure that it's dry underneath me. Is I want to distress. This little bugger, the whole thing, I want it, I don't want it as yellow as it is. So I want to distress it and then go around the edges with another um, brown ink walnut. This one is vintage photo. So you can kind of see one compared to the other. And then this one. Getting nice and dirty and grendy. Should I bring the camera closer to my hands? So I haven't decided what kind of specimens I'm going to put in this at all, but 
I do want to put some kind of specimen with, you know, in between acetate. I don't know whether it's going to be a flower or a plant or a bug. I have a real live butterfly wing that um, my boyfriend found for me. <laughs> it's love when your boy brings you home a butterfly wing. <laughs> Here, honey, here's a dead piece of bug. <laughs> All right, so now let's go ahead and just go around the edges with the gold. Isn't it funny? I put this white piece of paper down underneath me so because, you know, that's what I do. I put paper underneath me, but I don't want to get the paper all dirty yet <laughs> because it's newer. Silly. There it goes. So when you're doing the edge of something, I guess you need just a little bit more. not working. There it goes. Or was it coming off my finger? You see it? It's not working so well. I guess I gotta put it down on the table. It works better. Okay, let's put it on here so you can see it. How's it look? So, that's my slide. Do it a couple more times maybe. And then maybe, I don't know, I thought it would take longer than that to play. <laughs> Kind of cool. So for a travel journal, what kind of specimens do you think I should put in there? Maybe a flower, like a souvenir flower type of thing, some kind of weed. 
The travel journal is kind of a worldly journal too. It's not for any particular place. The person that I'm making it for, Jewel, she's actually um, a creative entrepreneur and she like coaches and mentors new entrepreneurs on like YouTube and they have tutorials on how to do editing and anything, almost anything online. So, and they travel, so then she has a, a vlog when they travel, but she wanted the journal, I think, mostly to write down like content ideas for YouTube and stuff. Since we're not really doing much traveling yet, I had a friend that actually just moved down to St. Croix from Jacksonville, Florida. Um, they had a five-year plan to um, remodel their house, totally debt-free, to just kind of pay for it as you go. She works at university, and he was... Um, a sales guy at a high-end car dealership but they had a five-year plan to remodel the house to rent it out to you know sell a lot of their stuff because they had a lot of stuff rent it out and then buy a boat sail to st. Croix and live there I think the original idea was to move to Key West but she um, is actually a doctor, and she got a, a job in St. Croix that she decided to take. And he's just going to probably scuba instruct. Hi, Cheryl. But I don't know, you know, what kind of limitations they had with getting there and what they had to go through, any kind of quarantining or anything like that. Oh, I want to distress the edges a little bit first. So this is what I'm doing. I'm just kind of repeating the process doing this little guy right here. I have four new um, metallic lusters that I'm playing with. I'm working with the gold one right now, but those are my four colors, the copper, green, gold, and purple. Majestic purple. A bird, a picture of a bird into the slide. Um, the journal that I'm working on right now, Kathy, um, is the, the travel journal. So it's the carpetbagger travel journal. If I don't know if you've seen any of them, because um, I've been kind of doing like a little video log of my progress on YouTube. So I have a couple few videos there. And I want to make three slides, so that's what we're going to do is put this little luster in gilding. I still have to really go through and distress my pages. I got them all coffee treated, though. So, that's progress. So everything's coffee treated. I just want to distress and sew and... Yeah, look at my YouTube. It's under Linda Lee Barnum. Actually, um, the Eco Dye Reveals will take you to my YouTube channel. And you can kind of see there. I made a little playlist of whenever I load a new video to the Carpet Bagger series, um, it goes to the playlist. So you can kind of see what I've done so far. I try not to keep the the video is too long, but you know how we crafters can get. 
And this inking is terrible to watch. Sorry about that, girls. the copper. Oops. That's what I didn't want to do. This one isn't as smooth as like the purple one. The purple one is probably the nicest one to touch and, and uh, move around. kind of dry. Is it supposed to be dry? You don't know how. Yeah, it's kind of dry. I don't know if maybe I sprayed a little water. Would it reconstitute a little bit, you think? Even if I dig deeper, it still feels kind of dry. Maybe it's just this color. Is That's how it is. I don't know. dries pretty fast too. Yeah, see that's not even really coming up off my finger. I'm just kind of pushing it. Hmm. You think it could just be old? I'll have to call the company. <laughs> okay. So I got those done at least. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. They dry with a little bit of texture too. 
So I bet you I could probably use them with like stencils too, right? And one of these little like thingies. Huh. I don't know if I want to goop up one of my stencils though. <laughs> I'll do these the other half of them later. Oh, for crying out loud. Ta da! So now I just have to make sure they're dry, probably, before I start gluing them to something else. But I really like them. So, where's the purple one? This one is so much creamier. I'm just playing girls just kind of seeing how how pliable it is does take a little while for this one to dry. The other one was like dry almost instantly. A wax brush? Like a paintbrush brush? I'll have to watch some of Kelly's and see how she does it. I know she does the thing on the glass and smoosh. I've seen that. I haven't tried it yet, but I've seen it. Ta-da! <laughs> all right. So that's kind of all I really had. I can show you um, the journal, though, real quick. Let's just move this stuff aside. that over top of that so I don't hurt anything. I'm kind of surprised how easy it does come off your hands. So the journal, um, this is like a piece of fabric, upholstery type fabric. I wanted it to look like, you know, a piece of a carpet, hence the carpet bagger. Um, it's not cut yet, but this is kind of how I want it to go. I've got it pinned. So I'm going to bind it here probably with a five stitch and then this is going to be free so it's only going to be bound in that one spot so that kind of like the big voyage journals that you see um, you know this covers the pages so it's fully protected um, I decided instead of making it like book like a book with multiple um, signatures I'm going to make one great big fat signature and I just got everything, for the most part, coffee stained. This I put in the dye, the same dye that I dyed the fabric. So I have, you know, a couple things that are the same purple. And then this is, I'm going to stitch this in for a belly band. 
Um, I don't have a lot of designer paper in here. I have a couple, uh, maybe four or five different, five different pages. Um, and I don't know how much, well, I do know how much I'm going to decorate it. I have one of um, the bags that I got some um, Bygones Variety Shop stuff in. But I want to put some gilding on these pages, so I don't know. With that gold being as dry as it is, I'm probably going to use a bunch of it. Maybe... Do you think... I'm going to put some water in here. And see if... It just sits on top and I can pour it off or if it'll absorb a little bit and maybe help reconstitute it a little bit. So I'll leave it in here and look at it tomorrow. If it doesn't absorb, then I'll just dump it out. But if it does, then I'll try and mix it in a little bit and see if it'll be a little more easier to work with. Yeah, isn't the fabric gorgeous? Um, this was blue, a light blue. I kind of put the other pieces away, but I have a video on YouTube so you can kind of see. I dye a whole bunch of different fabrics because I didn't know for sure which one I was going to use, but I want um, the customer, my customer, um, wanted indigo purple as the primary color. Um, so that's where... I bought a RIT liquid dye and then just dyed it all in a bucket and let it sit for like 15 minutes and rinsed it by hand and hung it to dry and it came out so pretty. So that's my story. And... I just had that one little piece of mail from um, Kay, and I wanted to play with those metallic things a little bit. Oh, back here I have a, another little journal that can come out. So I just have it tucked in in the back. So this will be a lot smaller, so it can be taken out and used and then just tucked back in the back. But I have some trim. I know some of you have probably already seen this, but I have some trim that I'm going to stitch on here in some way, somewhere, probably like this. And then I'm going to tie it shut with, I don't know, maybe a piece of leather. Or I dyed some cotton fabric that's a little bit different in purple just because it was a different fabric that maybe I'll use that to to tie it shut and I might use it like a, a seam binding on the top too unless I put this on the top I'm still a little undecided but I'm making progress and I want to use a book plate too but if I make this too short and not go over enough then I can't really put a book plate because um, I got some book plates spare parts Hobby Lobby so I'll, I'll use another a different piece of fabric and you know probably stitch it here I don't know if I'll slow stitch or do it by machine I do I'll probably do something um, by hand just because of the times that it's coming from you know the Civil War times all right girls I haven't seen too many people go on um, on for live tonight but hi Heidi congrats on the journal um but I'm gonna see who else is on I think Betty was on doing um a journal flip through I saw that and Kelly was on briefly but who else I don't know All right, well, I really don't have more. I know I said that already, so I'm going to just say goodbye. Have a wonderful evening, and maybe I'll come on briefly 
and um, show you what happened with this tomorrow just so you guys have like a little bit of follow-up whether to or not to ever do it <laughs> all right take care have a great night my friends bye bye